Hello and welcome to this video on the sequence function of Excel. The sequence function is awesome. It is one of the dynamic array functions that was released in the last few years. And it's one of those functions that when you first see it, you're maybe not that sure as to how it will be of benefit to you. I must admit, when I first saw it, I was thinking, hmm, how would I use this? What scenarios could I use this for? And it wasn't long before I realized how absolutely brilliant this is. In this video, we will start with the fundamentals and cover how sequence works inside out. And then we will finish with two real world examples of it in action. So to begin with, if I click in a cell, and start the sequence function, we can see that sequence, its job is to return a sequence of numbers. So it is in fact the formula alternative to when you may type a number in a cell and drag that fill handle down to create that series or that sequence of numbers or dates. When you open up the function, it has four arguments only the first one is mandatory. The first argument is how many rows. So for a quick demo of that, if I just type in 10 and close off the function, it simply delivers a sequence starting from number one and covering 10 rows, stepping one each turn. As I mentioned, kind of the formula equivalent of me typing one inside a cell and then using a technique to generate a sequence of 10. Okay, coming back to the sequence function and let's see what else it can do. So the next argument along is the number of columns. So if I put 10 rows again, and this time maybe two columns, then we get it expanding over two columns. You notice it steps to the right before it steps down. So we've got one, two across the columns, then three, four, and so on. The next two arguments of sequence are simply the start and the step. And for those of you who have done some large filling techniques before, you may recognize these because they are found in the fill options of the home tab when you come into series. There you have your step value and your stop value. And when you look at this window, you can see where sequence has its options from. You can even see rows and columns mentioned in the top left. Let's have a quick look at those. So sequence, let's have 10 rows, one column. We'll start from number five and we will step every three. I'll close off this and run it. And there we go, starting from five, stepping every three, only going down the 10 rows, no columns. So this is just a quick look at the different arguments at the moment, just to get a feel for what sequence does. And at the moment, it may not look that impressive. Like why would I want to do that in a formula? Well, trust me, there are many, many reasons this is a true hidden gem that I'm sure will get more limelight as people become more aware of it. The next thing I wanted to demonstrate is counting down in our series. So back to sequence, let's do a simple example. We want to get to these exciting options, don't we? But let's say that I want 10 rows. I'm not interested in the columns. Now, if you are just using one column, you don't have to mention it in the argument. I could just put a comma and skip it. I'm not saying you should do that. It may be better to document your formulas, but it is something you can do. I'm going to tell it to start from number 10, and then for the last argument, the step is minus one. So this time I'm counting down from 10 and not up to 10. Running this, 10 down to one. Now for the final example before our two real world examples, I wanna look at transposing the sequence function. 
you may remember that when I did this example earlier of 10 rows and two columns, that it counted to the right before it went down. Now we can change that. Coming back to that formula in the first cell, this is an array formula. So remember the formula only lives in that first cell. And if we come back into it, let's change the rows to two and the columns to 10. So we'll completely switch those the other way around and then wrap the transpose function around it. And by doing this, we reverse the way it counts. So instead of coming one, two to the right, three, four, so on, we are now counting down the column and then we get to the next column. So we've seen all four arguments of transpose. We've seen how you can reverse the sequence and we've seen how you can transpose and change whether the sequence goes across a row first or down a column first. Let's now look at two more realistic scenarios of it in action. So coming across to the data sheet here, I have a table named TBL cells. You can see a date column in column A and then just information about those cells, most notably the values in column E, this cells column. Now coming over to my analysis tab, we're going to use sequence in two analysis tasks. Task number one is with dates. Sequence is brilliant with dates. It's very common for people to use the fill handle to create these sequences, whether it's a monthly pattern or a weekly pattern. So it's probably not a surprise that sequence is great for creating these dynamic and flexible sequences that can change on the fly from an input value or based on the change in the date. So in this example, I've got today's date in cell B3, and what I want is a list of dates from cell B6 for the number of days stated in cell C3. And I have a sum ifs function waiting for us in cell C6 to find the total for those dates. So in cell B6, sequence function, the number of rows, well, that is specified by the input value in column, sorry, cell C3. Comma, how many columns? Not interested. Let's put a comma and skip past it. The start value, well, that is the value in cell B3. That is today's date. I want to count backwards on the last seven days. Comma, therefore the step value is minus one. So you see, this is really similar to what I did when I counted down from 10, but now in a more realistic setting, because I have context such as last seven days from today. When I close bracket and press enter, that creates that sequence. Those cells were already formatted as a date in advance, and the sum ifs function that was created in advance, then kicks into gear and sums the values from the sales column for those dates. And you can see it using the reference to the spill range there, B6 hash. Now, because that sequence functions references the two cells in B3 and C3, if today's date was to change, it would update. And indeed, if the number of days was to change, if I change that to 10, it would update. Or to five, it would update. The dynamic part of dynamic arrays in full exposure there. Now the final example in cell F3, let's imagine we want to sum the top five transactions only. The top five sales, how much were they? Now in the past, we have used sum product primarily for tasks such as that, before we had the array engine and before things like sequence were around, and we would probably type in some kind of array constant. Very simple this time. We're gonna use a standard sum function because we want to sum these values, but we do need the top five. So we can use the large function where it returns the cape largest value. Now, I don't want to return the fifth largest value. I want to return 
all of the top five. I want one, two, three, four, and five, and then sum those values. So within large, I will begin by feeding it the sales column of TBL sales. But then once I've done that, for the cape value, that is where I'll bring in sequence, because sequence returns a sequence of numbers. And if I just give it the value from cell E3, aka 5, then that will create the sequence of 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Close off sequence, close large, close sum. Pressing enter, that is the sum of the top five values. And if I change that 5 to 15, that's the sum of the top 15, to 3, that's the sum of the top 3, and so on and so forth. So two quick examples there of sequence. It is a truly brilliant function. You may see it in action with various date examples. It's quite common. It's brilliant with the index function and with filter in various scenarios that you may come across at some point or see in other videos. This video is more of an introduction uh, to the sequence function. Go and explore, see what else it can do. It really is quite magical. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please, if you did, subscribe to be notified about the latest tutorials at this channel. Take care and I'll see you again soon.